Hey everybody, Mark Youngworth here. I've received some questions and some criticisms from Harry Link as well as a few other people regarding my last video that I put together on the Harp false flag alien event disinformation psyop connection. Although the vast majority of the viewers very much so appreciated the video and found it to be very informative and helpful, I have received some criticism and some questions. So I put together this addendum video to answer some of those questions and to see if we can bring an end to this debate over whether or not HARP can or cannot do the things that it is said that it can do. And throughout this video, you will be able to see Harry Link's so-called investigation techniques and tactics. And I believe you'll find it very interesting and telling to see exactly how this transpires. And all you have to do is think about people playing poker, okay? It's called the bluff. Plenty of times people will have jack squat in their hands, but they'll bid like they have something really good. And of course they will even, you know, make a certain gesture or say something or, you know, look in a certain way with their face in order to deliberately try and fake people out. Fake them into thinking that they have something that they don't know why do they do it in poker. Why in poker do they try to make people think they have something when in fact they don't? In poker, you're faced with a decision. You either bet or you fold. And a lot of people, they'll fold because they get tricked. Now, in, in our situation, if they are doing that, and I'm not even going to just be specific with Harp here, but if they're doing that, it is not to make you fold. It is actually to make you concentrate your efforts on something that may not even exist. Now, this you know explanation, this description I'm giving you here doesn't just apply to Harp. It, you know, it may or may not apply to Harp. I'm telling you we're digging into that. But I would argue that it certainly applies to reptilians. Certainly. I, I have absolutely no reason on the face of the earth to believe that there are people walking around who are actually reptiles that you can rip your skin off and they have scales. And anybody that says they believe that, they better have extraordinary evidence. That's what it is, the phrase I was trying to get yesterday. Extraordinary claims will require extraordinary evidence. If somebody's gonna say, there's people walking around in a reptilian, they better have some extraordinary evidence. And by that I mean, they better show me somebody whose skin I can rip off and find scales underneath. The first thing I noticed was that Harry goes to an indirect comparison and association between harp and reptilians. Now reptilians is a topic that has become well known for being disinfo and when somebody wants to make something sound absolutely impossible and just like incredible nonsense. You bring it up right alongside reptilians, or make associations between whatever topic you want to make sound crazy and reptilians. So, this was the first red flag. But I have audio, as I said yesterday, talking to somebody about Carl, who once I asked him a couple questions, went on to say that he controls it with his head, his mind. I mean, you know, come on. It's interesting, I once picked up a woman, I was, uh, with my wife coming out of a restaurant, it was cold. It was about 15 degrees below zero. And uh, we were about a block to a block and a half away from a hospital. And it was night, it was well below freezing, and we were just getting in the vehicle. And up the road comes running this woman in a hospital gown. And she was running away from the hospital. <laughs> So I was like, oh my goodness, what's going on here? But when it's 15 degrees below zero, you know, you're talking, you know, 45 degrees below freezing. Honestly, I, it wasn't in me 
to stand there and ask her questions. It wasn't even in me to say, oh no, I'm not letting this crazy person in my car. I'm not that kind of person. First off, I don't live in fear of anybody or anything. But I mean, I guess I'm the kind of person that puts myself in other people's situations. So, you know, I open the back door, she jumps in, I get in the vehicle, and she starts talking about how there's people out to get her. So, I'm like, okay. There's been people out to get me. People have kicked into my door. The, the government has kicked in my door twice. They shut down one of my websites. This is not foreign to me. Okay? So, I listened to her for a while. I drove around, you know, and, and she, I, I just asked her some simple questions. And this is what I'm saying. This is what you've got to do. So I asked her simple questions. And it didn't take long until, you know, out of her desperation to explain her situation, you know, after a couple questions, she got down to explaining that she had a laser inside her head. And at that point in time, I could make a, you know, pretty, pretty so solid determination that she actually is has some mental problems. So I cut off a cop in traffic, because what else do you get to do that, you know? <laughs> I cut off a cop in traffic, and then I just walked up to the door, and I said, look, there's a crazy woman in my truck. You gotta, you gotta get this crazy woman. And uh, he's like, what are you talking about? She jumped out the window of my truck, because I had locked her in and started running, so he got her and stuff. But, but the point of this story is, just ask questions. Ask simple questions, and, and it doesn't take long to determine if there's truth to what people are talking about, or if they are basing it on absolutely nothing. Here's red flag number two. Harry has yet to prove that the technology that Harp uses is scientifically inadequate to produce the results that it is said to produce. However, Harry has no problem resorting to attempting to make it sound like if you believe that Harp can do the things that it is said to be able to do, like cause earthquakes and manipulate the weather, that you are some sort of lunatic or crazy person. I must say, it's pretty ironic to see someone who is supposed to be an anti-New World Order activist using the tactic of, oh, well, if you believe in this idea, then you must be a lunatic of some sort, or, oh, the only people that believe in this idea are crazies. Well, that's the exact sort of rhetoric and nonsense propaganda that the mainstream media uses against anti-New World Order activists. But I will remind you that the cyclotron, which in the video that Mark Youngworth played, intermixing it with me, the guy flatly said that Hart was used a cyclotronic somebody, it used a cyclotron in order to contain the, it into a, a spiral beam. My research has shown that a cyclotron, the cyclotron can only exist in a vacuum. Okay, Mr. Harry Link. Please pay attention here. What Dr. Begich said was that HARP uses a cyclotronic frequency. If you look at the original HARP patent, it states, Electrons and ions both follow helical paths around a field line, but rotate in opposite directions. The frequencies at which the electrons and ions rotate about the field line are called gyromagnetic frequencies or cyclotron frequencies because they are identical with the expression for the angular frequencies of gyration of particles in a cyclotron. In other words, HARP does not actually use a cyclotron, however, the frequency which the particles vibrate at is known as a cyclotron frequency due to the angular motion of the particles being identical with the movement of particles in a cyclotron. If I'm the New World Order, I'm going to thwart the anti-New World Order movement by bluffing, by saying I can do things I can't. 
in getting them to concentrate or at least to worry about and to stress about something that doesn't even exist. And if I'm going to do this, and I'll give you an example right here. And there are some people who would argue, even argue with this. The no plane theory at the World Trade Center. There are people who believe that they were holograms and there, there were no planes at the World Trade Center. Now there are plenty of you out there who know that there were planes that hit the World Trade Center. There are plenty of you out there who know that that is disinformation. The, the whole hologram, no plane theory. You know that's disinformation. No, this is interesting. First of all, Harry, how do we know for sure exactly that planes hit the towers on 9-11? How do we know that, given what we know their technological capabilities are as far as not only video editing, but as well as far as producing holographic images? How do we know that that wasn't the case? And I'm not saying whether planes did or did not hit those towers. What I'm saying is that all that we can prove is that we do not know what hit those towers. We can prove that it most likely was not the commercial airliners that it was claimed to be. What do we have, really? We have some video from September 11th that shows one of the planes entering one side of the tower and an intact aluminum plane nose exiting the other side of the tower which is physically impossible an aluminum plane cannot penetrate a steel building and come through the other side completely intact so what hit the twin towers on 9-11 who knows could have been a plane, could have been missiles, or very well could have been nothing. Could have been a hologram. Could have been any of the above. So what's to say heart cause and earthquakes is not disinformation? You know, can you discount that just offhandedly when you know they're planting disinformation? And the, the major point that I'm making here is that if, if, that is what they're up to, then that means they're putting information out there. They're throwing out breadcrumbs for you to follow. And this movie here may be one of those breadcrumbs. And, you know, by flooding the information, or by flooding the internet with information to make people think something is true that's not, what that tells you is you cannot follow those breadcrumbs. You can look at them, but you better do your research outside of documentaries, the articles, and the posts that are being passed around Facebook. Because those are there specifically to deceive you. That's the main point that people have got to understand. You can't just say, oh, well, Hart must be real, because look at this documentary. If that documentary is made by the people that want you to think Hart is real, just like September Clues is made by people who want you to think that those were holograms and no airplanes. They made the documentary. Now Harry Link would have us believe that the main purpose of people exchanging information and posting links to documentaries and other such political information on social networking sites such as Facebook is not to actually share the information, but that much of that information being passed around on such social networking sites is just information that's there to throw you off. Now, I can understand how somebody would be skeptical of some of the information that gets passed around. That is totally reasonable. However, what is not reasonable is lumping all of that kind of information into one category, saying that when information is being passed around Facebook, that its main purpose is to distract you. And I must also curiously ask, what about all of the articles and documentaries and comment posts and notes that Harry Link produces himself and or reposts on Facebook. Are those items there just to distract us as well? With what we've seen so far from Harry Link, what we will see next is just par for the course. Harry begins taking shots at people who happen to smoke marijuana. Now, somebody may want to educate Harry Link on the benefits of marijuana and the cannabinoids that it contains. 
a film called What If Cannabis Cured Cancer Might Do You Some Good, Harry Link. Well, by using these naturally occurring field lines, you can actually manipulate energy coming off the ground, coming off of a field of antennas like what HARP um, has in Gokana, Alaska, which is just 250 miles uh, northeast of Anchorage. This facility that was built um, in, in, 19, in the early 19... Okay, there again, he, he made a statement and had absolutely no explanation whatsoever on the face of the earth for the statement that he made. And I'm going to back it up a couple seconds, but he says, and by using these you know, magnetic lines, you can manipulate blah, 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 and then, oh, let's change the subject. So let's back it up again so people can see this. And, and I don't know if, you know, and I don't mean to offend anybody out there, but I've never smoked weed, so maybe people who smoke weed are more inclined to just believe things, whether they're true or not. Maybe they can't see holes in, in people trying to trick them. Now, interestingly enough, what Harry Link just did is a textbook example of psychological warfare as well. And one of the tactics that our government and military uses in psychological warfare in trying to suppress someone's information and ruin their credibility. Oftentimes, when someone is bringing forth information that they do not want presented to the public, the media will begin a smear campaign, and the person who is putting out such sensitive information will be maligned in many ways often these ways include sexual immorality and drug use because such activities make people less credible in the public eye yet don't actually debunk any of the information okay now if you listen he's going to make a statement he's going to say you can do such and such and then he's going to fail to explain how you can do that. He's going to fail to explain precisely what technology you would use, how that technology would be capable of doing that. It's where this energy is interacting with the atmosphere. Well, by using these naturally occurring field lines... By using these naturally occurring field lines... Listen to this. By using... These naturally occurring field lines. You can actually manipulate energy coming off the ground, coming off of a field of antennas, like what Hart um, has in Gokana. Okay, so by using these magnetic field lines, you can manipulate energy coming off the ground. What the man just said is that you can use the magnetic field around the planet to manipulate the energy coming off the ground. He didn't say you can use heart to do something. He said you can use the magnetosphere. And furthermore, he will give no detail whatsoever on how you can do this. Observe. Alaska, which is just 250 miles uh, northeast of Anchorage. And that's where it's at. Now let's change the something. That was built, um, there you go. He just... You can do it. Now let's change the subject. Because I'm not going to tell you how it works. Okay, here I can at least understand Harry's frustrations. However, the documentary that I used with Nick Begich in it was about an hour and a half total in itself. And I'm sure that they had to cut out parts that they would have liked to have in that hour and a half documentary to be more thorough as well. However, when you put a project like this together, the objective is usually to wake up as many people to the technology as possible and to make them aware of the things that it can do and give them a basic overview and not go too much into detail. And not because they're trying to hold back information, but because the goal is to keep things as simplistic and understandable as possible for the people. In, 19, in the early 1990s, has been advanced significantly. It started with 48 antenna. Now, I, I know this probably seems a little strange to people, but bear in mind, this is a video that somebody put up to prove to me 
that Harp is perfectly explainable. Harp is real. Harp is really doing all these things, and here's proof. Well, I'm playing the proof right now. But the thing of it is, Harry, you're not playing the proof right now. What you're playing is the first seven to ten minutes of a video that I put together that is over an hour long. That's not playing the proof. It is avoiding the proof. What you're playing is the brief description by Dr. Nick Begich of what HARP is, and that is not the complete proof of what HARP can do. You are ignoring Dutch Sense's videos, and you are ignoring the fact that, although, yes, what Mr. Begich is saying is a bit of a gloss over of the technology, you can look into the HARP patent, and you can look into the studies that the military has done with HARP, and you can check for yourself, and you can read up on weather modification, and these are all very, very easily verifiable pieces of information here. And Harry Link knows very well that the tiny bits and pieces that he is showing you from my video is not what should be considered proof. My video is over an hour long, and should he actually show you the entire video, you would understand that the video does indeed contain proof. The reason for this is you're just supposed to smoke weed and get scared. Smoke weed, get scared. Smoke weed, get scared. And then start freaking out about something that may not even exist. Smoke weed, get scared. Smoke weed, get scared. Harry Link, where do you get this absolute nonsense? Seriously, you obviously haven't done too much looking into independent studies on the effects of marijuana, but that's neither here nor there. The fact of the matter is, is that you should not be using such dirty, underhanded tactics to try to sell whatever ideas that you're trying to sell. Let's stick to the information, rather than attempting to portray people as paranoid, frightened weaklings, or more likely susceptible to fear and paranoia if they smoke marijuana. You should know better, Harry, than to try to pull such nonsense with me in a debate, but in all reality, it shows that you seriously just need more integrity in your argumentation in general. The upper limits of the array, in terms of effective radiated power, which is not the input power, but it's the um, effective radiated power, how that energy actually relates uh, in the environment. In, in this case, the desired level is one billion watts. Okay, so, and, and I'm going to jump in here, because this is one of the more important parts of this that we discussed. One billion watts. <laughs> now, I don't see a power station around Park there, do you? I, I don't see a nuclear power plant. Where's this one billion watts coming from? Are you trying to tell me that they are transmitting a billion watts and, and they don't have a billion watts to transmit? Where's the power coming from? That's a very legitimate question. It's a very easy thing to answer. Where's the power station that's giving them a billion watts? If, if they're, you know, storing it up over time, where are the storage batteries or whatever method you're using to store up a billion watts to transmit? How long can they transmit a billion watts continuously? Details, details, details. Otherwise, you're just fucking full of shit. The amount of energy that was required was huge. So Dr. Eastland went to ARCO. At that time, Atlantic Richfield had huge, huge natural gas uh, resources on the north slope of Alaska, ideally suited, according to Eastland's patents, uh, for exploitation for this technology because natural gas supplies would allow the um, conversion to electrical energy using magnetohydrodynamic generators called out in Eastland's patents. And then from there, that electrical energy could be fed into this huge array and then sent up to the ionosphere for the various weapons applications. So the ideal situation presented itself in the early 90s, and it was location within the boundaries of the United States for a ground-based system that, if, that in effect, as we go through the day today, um, you'll see has all of the ramifications that were being sought 
uh, in the 80s under the old Star Wars concepts. The idea of a global missile shield or protection from adversaries uh, using low orbiting space platforms and the like. So here we had a technology emerging that could solve those things. For Atlantic Richfield it was great because there's no gas line presently coming out of Alaska to bring that gas to market. And we've been producing oil from that field for over 30 years, yet we can't get uh, the natural gas. So for ARCO to be able to sell the gas to the military right where it is offer tremendous advantage. So they set up Arco Power Technologies, Inc., a subsidiary with 30 employees. They originally bid on the HARP project after selling the concept to the military in the early days, in the late 80s. Uh, Dr. Eastland actually put together that original team that became Arco Power Technologies, Inc. Now what they did as a subsidiary, they had no track record of military contracting. They had really no history at all. They bid for the HARP uh, construction um, and applications on that project and won. And who did they bid against? Raytheon Corporation for one. Raytheon at the time was one of the, what was the 44th uh, largest company uh, in the world according to Forbes magazine. And they were the inventors of things like the Patriot missiles and some of the new um, active denial systems being promoted today. In other words, they had real weapons applications and histories Yet this little subsidy, Arco Power Technologies, won the contract. Now, in public procurement, the way you win those contracts is actually um, through what's called proprietary information. Certain companies are given extra points and advantage if they hold the technical knowledge necessary to carry a project out. In this case, Arco Power Technologies, Inc. own those nine uh, critical uh, patents associated with the HARP program. And those are cited in the book, Angels Don't Play This HARP, along with over 300 military, academic, and mainstream media reports on HARP. So that's the place, if you really want that detailed source material, get the book, take a look at the bibliographical uh, indexes, also look at the Lay Institute site. The, the fact is, what happened in all of this development was this excitement from ARCO, because here it was. They were going to make money on gas they could never make money on before. But what happened is the company went through some controversies, some changes. The company eventually sold, actually. Arco is no longer here. But the company itself, the subsidiary, was later sold to another organization called E-Systems. And E-Systems was the subject of Washington Post reports back in the early 90s. Uh, they predominantly were, at that time, were a $2.1 billion company with the vast majority of their income derived from what are called black projects, projects so secret even the U.S. Congress doesn't know what they're funding. And the citations regarding that are also in the book, Angels Don't Play This Harp. The point is, this company ends up with, with the patents and, and, the, and the subsidiary. And what did they do? They sold out. They sold to none other than Raytheon Corporation, the losing bidder on the first project uh, in the beginning. So Raytheon ends up with the intellectual property. They end up with that project, and they later uh, sold to uh, British Aerospace, which is an interesting um, change of events, and that was in 2003. Um, the project also shifted in 2003 from the Navy and the Air Force over um, to DARPA, which is uh, the Defense uh, Department's research agency that deals with, again, uh, very, very classified uh, research and projects. To date, I've still not found a single person willing to come on air and discuss it outside possibly Mark Youngworth of Mayor Change Oshkosh. He said that he still needs to do more research and then he might be able to come on air and discuss it, but he is, you know, pretty much attacking me for questioning it. When I asked him to come on air and discuss it, he said he can't because he doesn't know enough. Now, how can I be attacked by somebody? Because I'm saying, I, I'm not sure about this. I get attacked, and then when I say, why don't you come on here and discuss it, uh, I, I got to look into it more. I got to I gotta learn more before I can talk about it. Well, if you got to learn more, then you must not, you know, know exactly what you're talking about either. All right, Harry Link, you are completely misrepresenting the situation right now, and I am about to prove so. Let's go to the Skype conversation between you and myself. I say to Harry, 
I watched your video on the Great Harp debate thing, and it sounded like you were definitely taking a position against. I know you called for debate, but everything you said gave the impression that you don't believe Harp has the capabilities that they say it does, such as weather control or influencing people's thoughts and emotions or causing earthquakes, etc. Harry Link responds, I'm not convinced and cannot find anyone to debate it on air, so I am a bit of a skeptic. I just want to know rather than speculate. I reply to Harry by saying, I think you should watch the whole vid I made, and I'll debate it on air once I have more stuff memorized or noted. Harry responds by saying, okay, I'll look forward to that then, Mark. Can you give me a link to the whole vid? I said, sounds good to me, yes, and then I link him the video. Now, there you have it. That situation is not at all as Harry Link represented it. Quite to the contrary of how he portrayed it, I volunteered to come on air. He did not ask me to come on air, and I refused and said, oh, I need to do more debate, and yada, no, not at all. That's not what happened whatsoever. He, in conversation with me, mentioned that he couldn't get anybody to come on air and debate the topic with him. And I specifically told him, I will debate it on air once I have more stuff memorized or noted. I volunteered to go on air. He didn't ask me and I refused. I volunteered to come on air and I still will come on air and debate Harry Link on the subject. So let's keep that situation straight. Over the years, Harp has created you know, quite a lot of controversy. In fact, um, you know, when you look up, if you do a search under Harp, H-A-A-R-P on the internet, you'll find thousands and thousands of sources and documents and materials. Some of it pretty outrageous, quite frankly, and some of it right on target. Aha! Uh -huh. Now isn't that interesting? So while I'm being criticized for wanting to know just exactly what are the capabilities of Harp, what can and can it not do, the very video somebody puts up in order to try and say that I'm wrong, the man in the video himself says that a lot of the information on the internet about what Harp can do is pretty outrageous. A lot of the claims are pretty outrageous. Now, unfortunately, he does not go on here to say what claims are, in fact, outrageous. He doesn't specify what claims are, are not true and what claims are. Could it be that this man himself does not understand Harp? I, I might argue that, yeah, that, that's probably the case. Because it is as everything is an evolving technology. He doesn't know what they did yesterday or that, you know, that he doesn't know what they're going to do tomorrow. You know, are they going to amp it up a couple watts? Or are they going to add a couple antennas? Are they going to figure a better way to do it? He doesn't know exactly how it works or what it's capable of. But he does say that some of the claims are, in fact, outrageous. I think the biggest claim about Harp, in my opinion, is that they're triggering earthquakes. So if he's saying some of the claims are outrageous, and that's the biggest, most outrageous claim, he's probably talking about that one. The problem is Benjamin Fulford put the video up in 2008, and we saw it happen in 2011. Coincidence? I don't know. The Benjamin Fulford video is an interesting piece of information to throw into the mix. However, Harry, I would argue that the real problem is that you're only showing the viewers the first 50 minutes of a video that I made that is over an hour long. And there are parts specifically later in the video where Dr. Begich speaks about the earthquake making technology and does go more into detail. But you're not showing that part of the video. So why don't I show the audience that part of the video one more time right now. But when you get into earth penetrating tomography, the problem that Brooks Agnew has and others have voiced is the idea of the energy concentrations because what he knew is that if you used too much energy in his worst case scenario you could trigger uh, ge geologic events earthquakes those kinds of events could be triggered uh, utilizing high energy uh, densities in the ELF range in fact there was a uh, DOD news brief briefing it goes back to April 27th uh, 1997 and it was a at the um, University of Georgia, and it was Secretary of Defense William Cohen. He was commenting on weapons of mass destruction. Remember, that's way before 9-11.
And one of the weapons of mass destruction he cited were environmental weapon systems utilizing electromagnetic energy for triggering earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and climate alterations. This is um, the U.S. Secretary of Defense, William Cohen, making that statement uh, in a DOD news briefing in 1997. Now let's go back for a minute to the, the work of Dr. Ben Eastland. You know, when he originated this concept, it was a long time ago. You know, you're now going back to the uh, late 1980s and the 1980s through the early 1990s. You know, technology has advanced dramatically since then. So this is um, the U.S. Secretary of Defense, William Cohen, making that statement. Uh, in a DOD news briefing in 1997. I have, I have, I have, I have. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can see what's going on here. Mark has essentially edited this video. He cut a chunk out, put a chunk in, whatever. He did video editing because it skips here. And he's talking about something different. So, that's very interesting. What is Mark cutting out of this video that we're not getting to see? Concepts that have been attempted over the years. In fact, these days, you've actually got the United States Congress um, two bills pending on the Senate and the House to create a commission uh, for review of other modification technology because commercial interests are now advancing them along with. Um, other military from around the world. Now watch for the skip. Because the video is in it. not be surprised in the least by me editing this video all of my works are edited video that's what I do I take pieces of events that relate uh, pieces of events that contradict another event and put them together back to back so you can see the actual truth about what's going on in any given situation um, in this case I happened to pull some clips from a documentary about HARP narrated by Dr. Nick Begich. And this documentary is about an hour and a half, two hours long. Now, there was no way that I could have possibly included that entire documentary in my presentation on Harry's issue with heart. I couldn't I couldn't have done it. I had to include Dutch senses videos I had to include uh, all of the clips that I had included From dr. Begich already. I had to get the clips of Bill Cooper and John Todd and Fritz Springmeier in there um, I had to get all that I had to get all that stuff. No, there's it could not have been done I wasn't about to make a three and a half hour video or whatever it would have turned out to Ben Nobody would have watched that my video, I didn't want the video that I made to be an hour long, but it was, because it had to be. I mean, come on. That's what documentaries are. Edited clips put together on one subject. In a documentary, do you see all of the raw video footage, interview after interview after interview for, you know, sit there for eight hours? Oh, I want to see everybody's, I want to see all the words that everybody said all the time. No. No. You can read the book, Angels Don't Play This Harp, and you can watch that documentary presentation, Angels Don't Play This Harp, 
or maybe that's called angels still don't play this harp, I believe. You can check for yourself. Check for yourself, and you can see that I'm not pulling anything out of context. If anything, I could have just given more information like I'm doing now to further prove my point. Next, we're going to take a look at a video posted by Harry Link on June 3rd titled Investigating June 1st Harp Rings Video. And this is the video where Harry Link did a uh, so-called investigation into a harp ring video. The problem is the harp ring video that Harry Link chooses specifically to investigate is not a very well made harp rings video and it is not by any means what I would call a good example of a harp ring video. It's not well put together. It doesn't give the viewer any sort of real thorough explanation on what they're looking for or anything of that nature. And at this point, Harry Link should have seen my entire video on harp. So Harry should have no excuse for using a poor example of a harp rings video when he has many good examples to critique that I gave in my video from Dutch Sense's channel, youtube.com slash Dutch Sense, D-U-T-C-H-S-I-N-S-E. Harry could have showed you a clip from Dutch Sense, but instead, he shows you this. And we're going to check, let me give you my screen here, somebody uploaded another video about harp rings. And I did mention, because I know, you know, some people are wanting to lash out at me as if I've taken a side in this, uh, in this harp thing. I have. And I've mentioned that there was a harp video that came out before some tornadoes, and it caught my attention. So here we have one, and you can see, I can enlarge my screen here, June 1st, 2011. Boom, boom, right there. June 1st, 2011. We're going to watch the video, we're going to look for, and we're going to look and listen and see what we can learn. And then we will find out what, if anything, happened. I've got 30 minutes. Let's see what, if anything, we can determine here. screen capture devices failed and IntelliCast.com would not properly load. What is Adobe Updater and why did it seem to be logging everything I typed? Okay, so please tell me, please tell me we don't have a video from somebody talking about heart rings who's already making excuses for not having in a video of his electric heart rings. Please tell me that's not the case. We'll move on and see what we come across. Okay, now I'm freezing this because we're looking at it. And that's what this is all about. So look at your screen. What do you see? And I'm looking. Uh, I see, and I, I don't know yet, yeah, you guys can see my cursor. We've got a straight line right here. That's because the radar radar does a sweep. So you can follow this line back and imagine there's a radar station around here somewhere. And keep in mind, these, these videos can probably be edited too. What it comes down to is what are they predicting and did it happen? <laughs> So he's pointing out this empty circle here. That's what he's pointing out. This is Ohio, this is West Virginia, this is Virginia. So we're talking the bottom right hand of Virginia. Now he's pointing up here. 
Pennsylvania, that'd be what? I don't know what that is. I hope I don't have to get out a map and find it. Okay, another source, northbrowser.com. So he says, certainly there were anomalies, quite a few, and pretty much all along the East Coast. What does he mean by anomalies? Does he just mean all of these blue round things? He calls all of them an anomaly? Because we can see the green... You know, that's what, flash flood warning? The yellow's an advisory. The orange, or whatever. But what is this blue over here? Because it's not on the legend. This is called the legend. Maybe it's over here. It's temperature. So it was expected that within 24 to 48 hours, there would be severe storms in this region, including and up to possible tornadoes. Any weather forecaster could tell you that. Any weather forecaster could not tell you that. If that were the case, these meteorologists would be reporting that there is severe weather to come 24 to 48 hours after a heartbreak occurs. But you know what? They don't report severe weather based on weather anomalies. They read cloud patterns. They don't just go, oh, an anomaly is showing up. There's going to be severe weather 24 to 48 hours at the center of this anomaly. I've never once heard a meteorologist report a weather event based on a harp ring or other anomaly, ever. Furthermore, he's saying expect. This was uploaded June 1st, 2011. He's using the past tense when he uploaded it. So, are we to find out that these things already occurred before he ever uploaded the video? Mm -hmm. Way later in the day, and into the evening, as of 1 June 2011, at 2.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is what we see. 2.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, June 1st. This was uploaded June 1st. There is no time. So this could have been uploaded after this uh, 2.35 p.m. The point here is not when this video was uploaded by this person. The point is, did you see a harp ring? And if so, did severe weather occur 24 to 48 hours after the harp ring? Mm -hmm. Tornado 
Now, he's showing that tornado watches were issued by the weather forecasters. What's his point? The weather forecasters, are they basing this on his heart rings? Because then he might have a point. But they're not, so it doesn't. Incorrect again, Harry. It doesn't matter if the meteorologist is basing their weather report on harp rings. What matters is, does severe weather happen at the center of where the harp ring shows up? You trace the harp ring to where the center would be. And you ask yourself, does severe weather show up at the center of the harp ring 24 to 48 hours after the harp ring appears on radar? And the answer is yes, Harry. And although the person who made this video did a poor job of illustrating that point, that's exactly what they were presenting. That radar anomalies, harp rings, were picked up on radar and that 24 to 48 hours later, severe weather occurred at the center of the harp rings. Now you can tell I'm looking for evidence. I'm looking for, you know, information. This may be the storms that are expected. Either way, heads up East Coast, love and care, stay safe. Okay? Now, this is simple. That was uploaded June 1st, 2011. He pointed out the very bottom right part of Virginia. This isn't rocket science. Let's see what happens. June 2011, tornado, and we're looking, okay, so we have four hours ago information, let's see if it relates to any tornadoes or huge storms right there, at the bottom right hand part of Virginia. These tornadoes swept through western and central Massachusetts. Okay, he also pointed to another part, which was not Massachusetts. It was actually, let me get a map of the country here. And I'm going to put myself on screen so you're not just looking at the screen, but you can see what we're trying to do here. Map of the United States. Okay, we're going to zoom in, and we're going to figure out just exactly what he was pointing to. Okay. There we go. And he was pointing to Virginia. Well, these are state lines that are very clear here, are they? Let's look at, oh, <clears throat> so he's pointing essentially, all right, we're going to go back and look at the video a little more. I don't know what I'm going to but he was pointing, I got to zoom out to see this. West Virginia, Virginia. He was pointing around here. Where's Massachusetts? Massachusetts is clean up here. So let's look at more information about these tornadoes. Western and central Massachusetts, 1,300 twisters reported this year. Putting things in perspective, that number is more than double the amount of storms reported at this point last year. While the alarming jump in funeral funnel clouds seen this year is leaving meteorologists inside to scratch in their heads, these same experts are confident that the increase isn't evidence to, to suggest tornadoes are becoming more frequent according to a report by so and so. Perhaps even more staggering than the amount of tornadoes is the death toll. The three deaths caused in one day's tornado occurred in 522 this year is the highest record total since 1953. Now, as I said, I've not taken a side in this argument. To say that we've had more deaths 
due to tornadoes this year than any time in the last, what is that, 70 years? 60 some years? Is evidence which would support that they are triggering them apart. It's, it's evidence. It's circumstantial evidence. And I'll acknowledge that. To say that, you know, he's pointing out the bottom right hand part of Virginia, and if nothing's happening there, that would be evidence against the whole harp rate thing. And, you know, there may not be a connection between harp and harp rates, you never know. But, you know, I'm going to continue to search for evidence here that there is something to this. So I'm going to put back in Google, Virginia. R-O-G. Let's see if there was a big storm in Virginia in June of 2000. Ah, here we go. Let's see what this is. Hail, hail fall. Okay, so we have hail in Virginia, June 1st, 2011. Here's the problem with this. The video was uploaded June 1st, 2011. That's the problem. The video could have been uploaded four hours after this happened. So we cannot count this as evidence. You know, I mean, if you want to believe, you can pretend that this is valid evidence, but the video was uploaded the same day that the storm took place. So that can't be counted. That is what it is. That's not my opinion. You know, you can pretend that it is, but let's see what else we have. Okay. One more time, we're going to go over this. It does not matter when the video was uploaded to YouTube. It does not matter. All that matters is when did the harp rings appear on radar? Okay, got that? When did the harp rings appear on radar? And in relationship to that, when did the severe weather occur? And did it occur near the center of the harp ring? 24 to 48 hours after the harp ring appeared on radar. That is the question. That is the only question that matters. And, you know, when they have a video that says, hey, look, you know, Harp's doing such and such in such and such place, and there's going to be a huge tornado here or something, and it happens, I'm going to be here and say, look, you know, it happened. But it happened. Hey YouTube, Dutch Sense here. It is 9.21 p.m. Central Standard Time on Saturday, May 21st, 2011. And 48 hours ago, just a little over 48 hours ago, I put out a harp ring warning for Belton, Missouri, right on the Kansas border. And look at what we've got going on right now, guys. We've got a very severe cell, uh, the most severe out of all the cells that are existing right now. It's got a white center, which means heavy hail and damaging winds, and it's heading right towards Belton, Kansas. You can just take the storm track on here, and, and you can definitely see it. Um, let me see if I've got a... there we go. Alright, look at the cone of projection on this. It's going right towards Belton. Here's my video from two days ago. Let me just play it for you here. City is a very obvious ring appearance, and it's not out of Kansas City actually, it's out of Belton, Kansas. Belton, Kansas, okay? So, those are the main towns that I can see so far. Now, we can go further west. This will be the storm that's going to be affecting these towns over here. So, we're looking all right, there you go, guys. So, I, I named Belton based on that harp ring, and look at this storm that's coming towards it, just so you can see the comparison towards the others. Uh, the others are severe thunderstorm, we've got a tornado, possible tornado here, and uh, well, that's what we've got going on right now. So I just wanted to show you that as another harp ring confirmation. Uh, you name the town right to the town. I mean, literally, this just got upgraded to a tornado just now. Possible tornado damaging winds and hail. There you go, guys. Uh, if you're from Belton, if you know anybody in the area, tell them to watch out. The video that you just saw was included in my first video. Harry Link has seen that video and
rather than respond to a legitimate heartbreaking video, Harry went out and found a real poor example of a heartbreaking video. And then, even though he found a poor example, he had to BS and botch the investigation even on a crappy example of a heartbreaking video. And we continue to see behavior from Harry Link that can be called, in my opinion, at best, highly questionable. See the plane actually pierce the building. There were several and angles. Virtually came out the other side.
stay tuned everybody much more coming in the future